coordinator for the co coordinator for the year of Peru. Um, and um, really delighted to introduce our speaker today, um, who um, I think was uh, first uh, recommended by uh, Dr. Robert Simon, uh, who was a student at one time of, of our speaker today. Uh, so it's nice to have some extra uh, kind of personal uh, connection with, with the speaker on our campus. Um, Dr. Lasarte is um, from Peru, and he attended, uh, did his first degree um, at the National Engineering University in, in Lima. Um, and, and then he started studying um, uh, literature. He did a Master's of Arts in Latin American Studies from the University of Texas, and a PhD in Romance Languages and Literatures from the University of Michigan. Um, he's currently um, uh, in the program, directing the program in Latin American Studies? No, I'm just a member. I'm a professor of, of Spanish. Professor of Spanish uh, at Boston University. Um, and his uh, topic today is Satirical Poetry in Early Viceregal Peru, Literary and Cultural uh, contradictions is uh, really his specialty. Uh, uh, satire and poetry, these are the two topics that, that he's worked uh, the most on and uh, in this period, like the uh, 16th century um, uh, in, in Peru. Uh, he's written several, several books on these topics, um, one uh, titled uh, Lima Satirizada, uh, Mateo Ros Ro Rosas de Oquendo and Juan del Val y Caviedes. Um, and um, as again, several books on, this, on these related topics. And right now is uh, working on a book titled uh, Pirates and Prostitutes. Uh, so maybe he'll tell us a little bit about that too. That sounds, that sounds uh, interesting, right? Um, so, um, he's also a member of the Peruvian Academy of Language um, and serving on the editorial board of a number of different uh, uh, reviews and publications. Um, has received uh, several different uh, fellowships, including the John Carter Brown Fellowship um, at the University of Michigan. So, uh, Professor Lasarte, um, uh, welcome to Kennesaw. We'll turn the podium over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm dropping this. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure for me and a great honor to have been invited to participate in the, in the, in this uh, celebration, especially since uh, you celebrate, you have a year dedicated to celebrating my home country. And that makes me very proud. And uh, I'm very flattered for your invitation. The talk I had originally prepared it went too long. It was going to be on epic poetry and satirical poetry. And it was when I was on page 65, I decided to stop. Uh, so I have uh, concentrated solely on satire. And I was told that perhaps I should give you some introductory or introductory words on on what I mean by vice regal. The, the title of the, of the presentation is Satirical Poetry in Early Vice Regal Peru, Literary and Cultural Contradictions. Well, vice regal just means uh, the vice royalty of Peru, uh, or some people call it colonial Peru. Uh, Peru and Mexico were colonized early, way early in the, uh, in the 16th century. Lima was founded in the first decade of the 16th century. Mexico also. Uh, what makes it very different from the early colonies of, say, the United States, uh, and this is a point of great interest, is that unlike the United States, the, the people who came, came either running away from uh, religious, re looking for religious uh, freedom or were endangered slaves, but they were actually, the ideology behind it is that they were looking for a new place to found something different than Europe. It, 
Mexico, the vice royalty of, of Mexico, or what was called the vice royalty, listen, of New Spain, that in itself tells you, and the vice royalty of Peru was initially called the vice royalty of New Castile. So the idea was that the, the Spanish uh, conquistadores or the Spanish explorers come to the New World and create societies which emulate the, the uh, courtly life of Spanish nobility or the Spanish king. The viceroy is like the king. The viceroy comes with a court and he has noblemen and, and, and it, very early on there are universities with doctorate degrees. They say that Lima in, in 1547 was a city that could compete with any European city in terms of its academic, social, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and political structures. There were great jurists, there were great, you know, they, in Mexico especially, there were, uh, the, the university had a, a great humanist component. By humanist, I mean people who were well, extremely well versed in classical Greek and classical Latin. Uh, so it's very different. Now, it, there used to be, of course, it, one always thinks of uh, the first question that I was asked was what happens to the indigenous population? The indigenous population is there, but it's voiceless for the most part. There are some early voices like Maman Poma de Ayala who writes a letter to the king saying, look, uh, the Spaniards are really not doing us, doing us any good here. Uh, but they're not enslaved. Uh, uh, they work, they continue, it's, the, the idea was that there was an Az, the, the Aztecs or the Mexicans had an empire and sort of the Incas. So unlike say Chile, which was very difficult, or unlike the United States where indigenous populations were nomads for the most part except for the Pueblo Indians or some people like that, uh, 